mining built the American West. Prospectors carved tunnels throughout the mountains in search of gold, silver, and precious gems. Some made their fortunes, others paid the ultimate price. But in 1942, mining for precious metals was halted for World War II, and all those mines were left behind. There are now over 500,000 abandoned mines in the United States. Many are worthless, all are dangerous, but in some, hidden riches still wait to be unearthed. Now one company is leading the rush back to those mines, braving extreme and unpredictable conditions as they explore the mountains of the West, claim the properties that hold value, restore them to work in order, and sell them to everyday Americans who want to make their own golden dreams come true. Gory and Jessica are a husband and wife team. They run Gold Rush Expeditions, the number one mining claim seller in the country. Right now, they're in California's high desert looking for a gold mine for a new client. My name is Chris, and I've always been fascinated with history, all sorts of history. My buddy Chris came to me, he got this mine idea going, and he wanted to do it all old school. I'm like, okay, why not? Work a regular job, and I think it's something that I can really get ahead and make more than just a living. I narrowed it down to the Old Dell Mining District. There are two potential mines. One of the mines is called the Brooklyn, and the other mine is called the Los Angeles. Give them a downpour. There is a very real chance that will wipe out any road access with washouts and flash floods. Definitely have a bit of a washout right here. We need to make sure he's aware that if there is a storm, this is probably going to flood out. Flash floods are common in the arid plains of the southwestern United States. They occur when heavy precipitation falls on dry soil with poor absorption. The runoff forms a fast-flowing front of water and debris destroying everything in its path. Even half an inch of rain from over 40 miles away can make a road impassable. I really don't like this ledge over here. If that tire starts to slip off the edge, let me know and I'll crank it back really hard. Careful on this road. This is slow. Shit. Corey and Jessica search in the scorching heat for the added entrance to the Brooklyn mine. I'm roasting. Hey, look at that. That's a good sign. God, I love seeing that. Let's get some helmets on. Man, this is a short entrance. My temperature's feeling better. I still haven't seen any good minerals yet. Yeah, me neither. Oh boy. Looks like there's two levels. Let me just make a note of this. Hey, if you could make that a little messier so I can't read it when I have to take a picture, that'd be awesome. Oh, some days, working with your husband. Oh, look at this. Now we're starting to get a vein. There you go. Probably really low grade gold, but that's a good start. The quality of gold ore is measured in ounces per ton. Anything above an ounce per ton is considered high quality and means that ore will be worth at least $1,500 for every 2,000 pounds. Corey's looking for ore that can generate up to two ounces per ton. That's over a dollar per pound. Oh, that's a ways down there. Main Street, there's a lot more down there. By seeing this Main Street behind me, what that tells me is that this was a main intersection throughout the mine. Right here, it's gonna connect with other levels, other streets, just like you would see on a regular street. Yeah. This is the mine my customer was looking for. I've well, seen the gold this, in it. This might be bigger than his price range. The Brooklyn mine is massive and has visible gold veins. It's just what their client's looking to buy, but it's gonna take a lot of work to get it ready for sale. Jessica stakes out the boundaries of the claim while the home office starts the paperwork. The claim is now theirs, and Corey calls in his recovery team. Maya, hey, can you hear me? No, it's enormous. We're gonna need a lot of rope, probably everybody. Bring a bunch of water, really hot days, and uh, really cold nights is what we're gonna look at. California high desert is one of Earth's most extreme climates. Daytime temperatures over 110 degrees can plummet by 50 degrees or more once the sun goes down. The greatest diurnal temperature variation on the planet. The next morning, the GRE recovery team arrives to complete the exploration and restoration of the mine. Hello, boys. So the team just got here. I've got a few projects for them that we want them to make this mine working order again. Right over here where you can see some of the tailings coming off, that's the only entrance we found so far. We got three levels. We're going to go up in on that top level. I'm going to split some of you guys off to go in, start dropping, see what it looks like. Corey's a riot to work with. You never know what project he's going to have us out on. Grab your gear. And I'm sure there's people out there that don't like getting dirty, and that's just fine. More room for me. It runs in my blood. My grandfather was a miner. We'll go up there, we'll find the added entrance, and then we should be able to hook up with these guys somewhere inside. Ladies to the left, men to the right. <laughs> I talk a lot of shit. I don't know, you know, it's just sort of my way. There's a shaft on the other side. Okay. It says 1560, I believe. It's deep enough to kill you. 
They drove this drift in right along this. What I'm seeing in the color is obviously iron oxides. I like the mystery and I like to see what's going on underground. Careful there, Kyle. I want to see what's up around this corner. What do you got, Tyler? Is it an orbin going down like a uh, Probably a shoot. I don't know, let me check. Hey, can you fit in there? Well, can we wedge you in there? Usually the jokes come at my expense. Corey's team continues to hunt for another entrance to the mine from above, while inside the mine, Maya prepares to descend Main Street. Kyle, if you'll just do me a big figure eight on the end, a safety stop, so I don't rappel off the end. Okay, I got about 50 feet going down, everyone clear? Maya is probably the most mechanically inclined one of the group. Super creative. He's like manly Martha Stewart. Well, what I can see is what I thought was a level is not a level. I gotta drop down another 50 or 60 feet before I can tell. Climbers inside a mine use what's called static line, meaning the rope has no give. If you fall and the brake catches, the impact is hard, but will keep you from bouncing around inside the shaft and maybe save your life. So we got Maya all the way to the bottom, about a 300 foot rope, and he had about 50 feet left, so we're figuring about 250 feet to that bottom level. Boy, you might have found yourself some gold. Damn. Shit. Right off. Damn, that's right off that the right vein. There. Oh, there's your gold. The noob found gold. Right fucking on, man. <laughs> they can talk smack all they want, but I'm the first one to find gold today. And we will give him shit for years to come, but uh, he's got that gold badge of honor. That's amazing ore, too. Gold is always found alongside other minerals, iron being the most common. In the Brooklyn mine, it runs along with copper azurite, which has a distinctive deep blue color. We're going to head back down, meet up with Team B, and find out how to get to this room inside. Maya, you got a copy, buddy? Maya, can you hear me? Hey guys, glad you're here. We got Maya down the hole. I haven't heard from him in a little while, and we got no movement on the rope for about the last 15, 20 minutes. Maya, you got a copy. Maya, you down there, buddy? We'll send somebody down if not. Where's Kyle at? They continued on to peek at the rest of the mine. I don't know how I feel about you guys putting up like this. Maya, you down there, buddy? Maya, you got a copy, Maya. Kyle, you got a copy down there? Kyle, come on back if you can. Oh, some good stuff down there. You know, we haven't heard from mine in about 15 minutes and no movement on the rope. Signal this with the rope at all, like nothing? Nothing. We've uh, we've been trying to get him and still nothing. Maya, if you can hear this, we're sending Kyle down. Wait a minute. On yeah. rope. I don't like the sound of that. Hey Kyle, how's it going down there? Any, uh, any sign of Maya? Yeah, all right. It's good to hear. All right. Hey, good to hear your voice there, buddy. What's up? Not much. My batteries are going dead, and I think the signal just attenuated in the shaft. With Maya back safely, they finish exploring the mine. The next morning, the real work of restoring it begins. The main thing I'm concerned is that uh, we're going to get up in that 110, 120 degrees. They might start cooking. I don't want anybody to die right off the bat. So we've got some place they can get into the shade, drink some water. That will probably save them. If we're going to get that roof on there, we need to make sure it's really secure. The old one was probably blown off. That's why all the tins everywhere. With the way this canyon shape, probably get some 80 mile an hour gust. Canyon wind, also known as gorge wind, is the nighttime down canyon flow of air caused by the coolant of canyon walls. Wind is modified by being forced through the canyon. Its speed is increased dramatically and its direction is focused by the cool air, creating a jet effect or wind tunnel. Let's do this then. All right, let's go. Kyle, wood, that's your genre, buddy. Their first project is to repair the old cabin's roof to provide shade from the searing desert sun. But they better work fast before that wind picks up. Why don't you hop up there and be ready? Coming at you get this done as fast as we can. There's not a whole lot of wind right now, but you know the desert this changes in a hurry. Copy that. We've got a really crack team, an eclectic group of individuals with a lot of talents, but that only helps us as we get out on these sites and have to problem solve. Hey, rookie, need your help over here. Right now. They tease me about being the ginger and having no soul. I burn. I always say I'm allergic to the sun. Right here. All right, get to work. You know what, guys? You guys are doing all right. Cabin's just about finished. The second project is to rebuild the ladder in the main street shaft. We want to make sure it's nice and strong. This is the only thing supporting our weight when we descend that shaft, so this has got to be tied securely. Otherwise, we drop to our deaths. 
With their projects almost complete, most of the recovery team heads home. Maya and Jeff stay to help Corey and Jessica show the mind of their clients. He should be up here anytime, so as soon as he gets up here, we're gonna give him the grand tour and show him the shiny, show him the sexy, and show him the gold. Hey, Jessica, I think they're here. Good afternoon. Hey, how you doing? I hope you're looking for a mine. I am. All right, beautiful. I'm Chris. I'm Corey. Finally get to meet you. Hey, Hi, nice that's, to meet you. that's Paul. I was telling you about him. Jessica. We started some sheltering on the top here. Keep you out of the sun a little bit because it does get super hot out here. Let's get you geared up and uh, get up into the mine. Great. Okay. Well, I personally have never done this before, so yeah. these guys are experienced and they're going to take us down, show us the ropes. I just want you to be able to identify what's in here. And then when you see it out here, you'll be able to identify it. How do they know where the ore is at? Because it looks just like regular rocks everywhere. It depends on who started the mine. If it was the Spanish, they looked at different okay. flowers that bloomed in the area. Because plants will grow off of that mineralization. One of the plants the Spanish looked for was the desert trumpet. It is an indicator of mineralized ground, and depending on the mineral content of the soil, the plant will change color. If you want gold, look for black. Hi. Jeremiah. Hey, okay, we'll head in front of him, put them in the middle, and you guys lead up the back, and that way we make sure we don't lose anybody. Watch your heads coming in here. I'm a little nervous about going in there, because uh -huh. you always grew up hearing stories and strange stuff. Well, I'm just afraid I might get claustrophobic inside this small shop. Why'd you say that? Because now I'm getting nervous. I hit my head four times already. You can see our veins continuing on. The whole tunnel just follows the vein there. Correct. And we're starting to get a little darker, so good gold oil will run with quartz. Chris, take a look at this. <laughs> that's got like got to be like that's... four or five stories down. We want to show them the gold, so let's get somebody in no harness. Yeah, let's and go. Let's... Some days my wife's balls are far larger than mine. She's off rope already, so she's clear of the shaft. All right, here we go. You're on your way. I'm going for the gold, you guys. Bali, come on down and check this out. You're doing great on your own. <laughs> well, Welcome. You hey, Jeremiah, you guys good? Yeah, Jeff, we're good. We're all off rope and we're on the level. We're gonna check it out. Okay, dog dick. I'll be down drinking the beer. You lazy bastard. Jeff is kind of our silver fox. He, he's a lot of fun. All this is what you're gonna want to take out. Lots left in this mine. Have a little surprise over here for you too. Oh, look oh, at wow. that. Look at that. Beautiful. Like what you see? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All right, well, let's get back out to camp, grab some beers and talk money. All right, let's do it. Yeah. So the clients got here, I've shown them the mine, and I think they're really excited about the mineral content. I really think that this will be a sold deal here. If Corey and Jess can't make the sale, with all the time and money they've invested already in the mine, they'll lose almost 25 grand. It should be maybe in the 80,000, but maybe we could let it go in the 60-ish. I mean, we don't want to insult you because we know it's worth a lot of money, but you know, we, we still need to have money so we can operate because 50000 is everything we have. And we have a learning curve we got to take care of. We've got the client up here and I want them to feel like they're getting what they expect and not that they're getting raked over the coals while they're out here. What are you thinking? 35 yeah. With our crew coming up and the time and money we put into doing some repairs on the site just yeah. for you guys to get here. 50000 is like the, the max that we have. That is like our entire budget. It's because we still have a lot of equipment. You guys are talking about getting a rock crusher. The expenses alone, the road and then the wear and tear on the tires. Yeah. And it's going to chew up a lot of stuff. Maybe if you guys would go somewhere around 38? 37, 38. What do you guys think if we maybe take a 40? That gives you eight for a crusher, a few thousand to get you started. Beat 60, brother. <laughs> I think 40 is doable, yeah. I think it's a deal. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's 40. 40. 40. Okay. 40. After a bit of haggling, the deal is closed. Corey and Jessica head out to file the paperwork and get a rock crusher while Chris and Paul get to work on their new claim. We made a deal with Corey and Jess, and Chris has more money into it than I do, but I think through this whole investment, we're really gonna come out on top and find a lot of gold. We're not looking for gold by the piece, we're looking for gold by the ton. So the more we get in the crusher, the more we get. To extract gold from ore, it must first be crushed to powder, then run through a sluice where the heavier gold particles are trapped. It's then concentrated using a froth flotation tank and then smelted to create a gold ingot. How many ounces per ton do they say we'll find? Ounce and a half per ton. So that's pretty good. And how many tons can we put through the crusher every day? I said we could do like three tons an hour. Over the next few days, these fledgling prospectors sift through the tailings, scour the mountainside for deposits, and chip away inside the mine, collecting that precious golden ore. We gotta go to that one really rich spot and start there. Before I break that big piece right there. 
Look at all that gold in that little piece. Look at that. All right there. Oh my God. Come on. Look at that. There's gold right there on top. See the gold piece, gold flake right there on top? We're gonna try to get as much of this ore as we can down the mountain. That I think is the hardest part about mining. It's just actually picking it all up and carrying it down the mountain. I mean, look at this. This is gold rich ore here. That's the good stuff right there. Yeah, man, there is a lot right here. Do you realize we own a mountain? We could probably work on this for two years and never pick up just what's laying on the ground. Once we get down the mountain and Corey and Jessica show up with uh, all the processing equipment, we'll get to processing and see what we got. There's gold in every bit of that. Oh, cool. Look how much is on there. That is some beautiful gold. We roll up today and these guys are already well into what they should be doing. They've got or spread out on the table. They're like, hey, look, it's gold, gold, gold. This is some awesome stuff, guys. I'm, I'm tired and happy. <laughs> that's, it's that's, exhausting. Well, we got Crusher behind us shortly. You know how the road is, so they're a little bit farther behind. But yeah. I got ice cold beers in the truck, so uh, you guys are good. Let's have a beer. I love to see a success story like this. This is exactly why we do what we do. But I didn't know that I would catch gold fever. This is awesome stuff. And let me tell you, we're gonna find some gold, baby. This season on Claim Hunters. If we don't get stuck and we don't get run over, then we should make it. I got the claws. Oh, but look at those whiskers. We've got a lot of water coming in. Yeah, we yes, do. Yes, we do. Look at that. So you've got gold, silver, and pyrite right there. God, that's gorgeous. If we want to get out, we need to move him. Since that chain snaps, it'll go through your fucking head. 